Hey, kiddo. So look, it's time that we had the talk. Nope, don't worry, I'm going to keep it short. And it goes like this. When a reviewer and a manufacturer love each other very much, they get together, they spend a lot of time with each other, and then after a while, they release this out into the world. Make sense? No? Doesn't make any sense to you? You know what? That's okay. Let me go ahead and grab your mother. Honey! Yeah, you're up next. I struck out. Okay guys, so here it is, the Typhon, the result of a collaboration between CSS Audio and Jay from Jay Z Yagi. But let's not waste any more time and get straight to the design of this loudspeaker. So what you're looking at is a three-way design that features a separate top half and a separate bottom half. The top of the speaker is sealed so it can naturally integrate with the bottom unit. Now the bottom speaker is ported in order to maximize bass output and to help the Typhon extend all the way down to 20 hertz. And the whole idea behind this speaker is to give the listener the advantage of of a compact speaker, but with all of the benefits of a full range tower. Each cabinet weighs in at a solid 75 pounds a piece and features real wood veneer. And the cabinet also uses a tapered design, which according to Jay is there to both increase cabinet rigidity and quite frankly, to look cool. Other features that you get with the Typhon includes an aluminum strip at the top of the speaker that's there purely for aesthetic reasons. You get jumper cables to connect both modules together. You get some fancy audiophile parts in the crossover. You get numerous high quality five-way binding posts. You get a tilting mechanism that allows you to achieve ideal time alignment between both halves of the speakers. You get a large rear firing port down at the bottom and then at the very bottom you'll notice some steel outriggers with unusually high quality aluminum floor spikes which yes are adjustable. So now it's time to remove the magnetic grill so we can take a better look at the driver complement. Okay, so as you can imagine, all of the drivers on the Typhon are from CSS Audio. Up top, you'll notice their flagship 1-inch soft dome tweeter, followed by three of their 7-inch woofers that use a paper cone material. And the reason why they went with three of the exact same woofers is to achieve uniform tonality throughout most of the octave range. On the bottom, you'll notice a rather large CSS J logo, which, if I had to be honest, looks somewhat overbranded to me, but what you get and don't see with this speaker is a 30-day money-back guarantee. So, the big question now is what is all of this going to cost you? Well, it's going to set you back roughly 5,500 US dollars for the pair. Now that's quite a bit of money. So now it's time to talk about what they bring to the table in terms of performance and what the whole JCSS collab is all about. Let's go. So the story behind the Typhon is actually pretty short and straightforward, and it goes like this. Jay, as most of you know, is a reviewer, and throughout the years he's reviewed a number of kits from CSS Audio. He really liked the speakers, and he's also dabbled in his own designs during his private time. So one day, he approached CSS Audio and said, hey, would you like to collaborate on a project together? Surprisingly, they said yes, so he immediately went to work on the design while CSS Audio provided their resources and some general help. And after two years, the Typhon was born. Now, this marks the very first time that Jay has brought his own from the ground up design to the market, and this also marks the first time CSS Audio has released a flagship level product. And really, what they were going for here is Jay wanted to release a speaker that really embodied the sound that he prefers, something that's warm, full, easy to listen to, and easy to work with, which just so happens to be the type of sound that CSS Audio is also going for. So, now that you understand the background, it's time to talk about what the speaker brings to the table in terms of performance. Okay, so I'm going to kick off this evaluation by giving you all a general overview as to what to expect from the Typhon, and then I'm going to dive into the usual details. So first, I want to address experienced audiophiles. So think of the Typhon like this. If you know and like the sound of the Polk Audio R700 tower speaker, and you want a better version of that sound, then the Typhon would make for a very safe recommendation. This is also a good solution for those of you who like the sound of the Bacard Audio S400 Mark II, and you're tired of waiting around for Bacard Audio to release a passive tower version of of that speaker. Now, for everybody else who has no idea what I was talking about, this is going to be my summary as to who I think the speaker's for and not for, starting with those of you who stand a pretty good chance of enjoying it. In my opinion, this is for those of you who are looking for a really good jack-of-all-trades solution, people who value the following. 
Number one, a speaker that's easy to work with, meaning it's not too fussy about room placement and equipment matching. Number two, you're somebody who values a strong, almost full range listening experience from a speaker that doesn't take up a lot of space. Number three, you want good overall performance with a sound that airs towards the warm and dark side of neutral. And then lastly, for somebody who listens to a wide variety of music and you need a solution that sounds just as natural and comfortable with playing back music like pop, rock, metal, electronic, hip hop, as it is with jazz and classical. If all of that is what you're looking for, then odds are you're going to love the Typhon. Having said that, it's not for everybody. If you're looking for more of a neutral and accurate sound at this price point, then odds are you're not going to like the speaker. It's also not for those of you who are looking for that forward, lively, rock and roll type of sound, nor is it for somebody who's looking for the most refined, resolving, and articulate presentation that your money can buy. So that's the general overview as to what the Typhon is all about. But to really determine if this speaker is for you, let's dive into some detail. Okay, so first, let's talk about treble. So the high frequency behavior of the Typhon is pretty interesting because what they've done is they've rolled off the lower treble but then spiked it up higher up the frequency range. And I think what they're going for here is a speaker that's easy to listen to but not boring to listen to. And I can confirm that throughout my listening sessions that yes, the Typhon seemed to respond well to a wide variety of recordings yet could still preserve energy when the music called for it. So if that was their goal, I would say they mostly achieved it but it wasn't without some sacrifice, which I'll get to in just a moment. Next, let's go ahead and talk about the mid-range. So the way this speaker projects mid-range out into the room is full, balanced, and confident. Yes, it does have a sound. I would describe it as airing slightly towards the warm side of neutral, but otherwise, as I said, it's balanced. Male vocals don't sound overly chesty. Female vocals don't sound overly thin. It has a pleasant tone to it, and it has this big, full sense of scale. In fact, this is one of the few Slim Tower speakers I've heard that can actually sound natural with music like rock and roll and electronic music. Next, let's go ahead and talk about the bass. So I think the bass is the star of the show here because even though the speaker only uses two 7-inch drivers, it does not produce wimpy bass. It can dig down low. In fact, I believe J and CSS claim it can dig all the way down to 20 hertz, but more importantly, it can hit hard for a speaker its size and it can get loud. I'm talking about it can play at very loud volumes and still give you clean, nuanced bass output. Now, we need to set some realistic expectations here. It's not going to give you the kind of visceral sound that you will get from a large powered subwoofer, nor is it going to give you the kind of visceral sound you could get from a much larger speaker using a much larger driver. So if you're a bass head, you may still want a subwoofer, but for everybody else, I think you're going to be content with the bass output that the Typhon gives you by itself. Other things that this speaker is really good at is dynamic output, which is pretty unusual for a speaker that has a slightly warm sound. So if you're somebody who, say, listens to classical music and you want a speaker that can show you the dynamic contrast within that music, the Typhon does pretty well. And when it comes to imaging, you need to know that this isn't the kind of speaker that lays down a big holographic sound stage. Instead, it's more about giving you a locked-in center image in between the speakers with an amazing amount of sound stage depth. So if you listen to live recordings, this speaker is going to allow you to hear the position of different musicians within that recording in a way that you don't find with a lot of other products even in this price range. So overall, you're getting a wonderful jack-of-all-trades performer that best of all is easy to work with. So while this speaker does clearly a lot of great things, obviously it's not perfect, so now it's time to go over some of those imperfections now. Okay, so before you rush out and spend thousands of dollars for a set of new Typhons, there are three things that you need to know. The first is that the Typhon is not a good solution for those of you who listen to your music at mostly low volumes. I'm talking about at 72 dB or lower. I found that at those volumes, the sound can be a little bit flat and the tweeter can draw a lot of attention to itself. The bottom line is that the Typhon is the type of speaker that needs a little bit of volume in order for the sound to come together and for you to understand what it's capable of doing. Next. The Typhon tends to homogenize the listening experience a little bit, meaning that after you get used to the sound, you may notice that it seems like all of your music was recorded in the same studio. Now, to be fair, just about every hi-fi product that has a distinct sound will do this. And most people don't have a problem with it, but it's still worth noting. But the big thing I want to talk about here is the treble. Now, subjectively speaking, I feel like the speaker should sound a little more resolving and refined for something in this price class, but that's just my opinion. The thing that's going to matter the most to you all is the voice 
pricing strategy of this speaker. So as a reminder, what CSS did is they rolled off the lower treble and they spiked up the upper treble. And I think this is going to result in polarizing opinions. I think some of you are going to listen to it and you're going to love it. Some of you are going to feel like maybe it's too smooth, but some of you are going to pick up on that boost and you may find the treble to be too spiked up, too aggressive and too unrefined for your ears, a little too unpleasant. Now, if that ends up being you, the good news is that according to Jay, CSS Audio will take in your speaker and then they will attenuate the treble so it's easier on your ear. So at least you have an option if you run into that bright sound. But otherwise, that's it for the caveat. So now it's time to hammer home what this speaker is all about by comparing it to its peers in the same general price class. Let's go. Okay, first let's talk about build quality. The bottom line is that both of these speakers are well made. While the Pearl uses far more expensive cabinet materials and is made by craftsmen in Belgium, the Chinese built Typhons are nonetheless very hefty and provide a lot of features and flexibility. Now in terms of performance though, we gotta be honest, these are speakers for two different types of listeners. The Typhon, for example, is for somebody who likes a warm sound, who needs a jack of all trade solution. Something that's easy to work with, that can get loud, deliver very deep and strong bass, and can play well with any type of music. The pearls, however, are better for listeners who value detail, refinement, a holographic soundstage, and natural tone. Compared to the Typhons, the pearls provide a more energetic and transparent sound that does a better job of showcasing what your music and equipment actually sounds like. Of course, all of this comes at the expense of loudness and bass power. So, as always, the best choice for you will boil down to personal taste. So now let's move on to the next comparison. <music> Okay, so when it comes to build quality, both of these speakers are pretty hefty. Having said that, I do feel like the fit and finish on the Typhon is just a little bit better than what you get with the Forte 4. Now, when it comes to performance, the interesting thing is both of these speakers actually have a few things in common in the sense that they're very easy to work with, they give music a big sense of scale, and they serve as a good jack of all trades solution. But having said that, they still sound very different from one another, which means they are for very different types of listeners. The Clips, for example, will be better for those of you who desire a sound that's punchy, energetic, and can give you more of that lively, you are there listening experience. Whereas the Typhons are for those of you who value more of a balanced and warm sound that's all about delivering extremely deep and powerful bass. So once again, what you like will depend entirely on taste. So with all of that said, it's now time to go ahead and wrap up this review. Okay, so look, here's the bottom line. Is the Typhon the perfect speaker? No. Is it going to make everybody happy? No, of course not. In my opinion, as I said at the beginning of this video, it's a speaker for somebody who's looking for a jack of all trades solution. You know you like a slightly warm and dark sound. You want something that's well made, easy to work with, can give you a full range presentation from a speaker that doesn't take up a lot of space, and you listen to a wide variety of music. If that's you, then there's a good chance you're going to enjoy it because you're literally who this speaker was designed for. And for everybody else, there'll be other solutions that you will prefer. Now, subjectively speaking, I also think the speaker looks cool and is priced fairly. Anyway, that is going to be my take on the CSS Audio slash Jay's Iyagi Typhon. Stick around if you're interested in setup tips, but if you've reached the end of the line, then thanks for watching, and until next time, peace. Okay, so the good news is that the Typhon is a very unfussy speaker to work with and is practically a drop and plop solution. But still, if you want to get the best performance out of this speaker, then I would suggest the following three tips. Number one is to pull this speaker away from a wall boundary. Give it some room to breathe. I would suggest starting off by pulling it out a good two feet away from any wall boundary and then experiment to taste. And what this is going to do is to give you the best bass and imaging performance out of this speaker. Next, tip number two is to spread them. The speaker, I mean. Spread them far apart and then point them towards your listening position. I would suggest starting off by having the tweeters face the outside of your shoulder area and then experiment to taste. And what this is going to do is give you a locked-in center image between the speakers. And then lastly, tip number three is to not forget about messing around with the tilting mechanism on the back of the speaker. For example, I found that in my room, I needed to use the full five-degree tilt adjustment in order to achieve good time alignment between the top module and the bottom module. There's something that 
that's free. It's there for you to try. And that's it. The only other tips I have to mention is that if you feel like the treble is just a little bit too spicy for your taste, before you reach out to CSS Audio, I would suggest using the grills on the speaker. In my small room, I found that it softened up the treble just a little bit, something that's free for you to try. And then if you feel like the bass is too strong in your room, I mean, sure, you could go with fancy audiophile solutions to put under your speakers from the likes of Still Points and ISO Acoustics. They'll get the job done, but what I would suggest are these cheap anti-vibration pads that are used for washers and dryers. It's literally a rubber cork rubber setup. It costs you around 20 bucks for eight. I have a link in the description box down below, but I found those to be very effective at taming bass. Otherwise, guys, that is it for setup tips. Now let's talk about equipment matching. Okay, so first let's talk about power. Now on paper, it looks like the Typhon needs a lot of power in order to sound good, but I found that in the real world, that's not necessarily the case. For example, if you're in a small room and you don't listen at loud volumes, then a good 10 watts per channel will be fine. However, for most of you, I feel more comfortable recommending 30 watts per channel or more if you're in a small to medium sized room, and then 60 watts per channel if you're in a larger space or if you listen at loud volumes. Next, let's go ahead and talk about specific equipment pairing. So as I've mentioned throughout this video, the Typhon is an easy speaker to work with and it's not too particular about the type of gear that it sounds good with. For example, it doesn't matter if you have a neutral amp or something that's on the warm side of neutral or something that's on the cool side of neutral, what you prefer will ultimately boil down to personal taste. However, one consistent variable that I did find with the Typhon is that they tend to sound best with amplifiers that have high quality power that are also known for controlling bass. Now let me give you two specific examples that really stood out to me throughout my listening sessions. The first and on the affordable end is the Audiolab 6000A, which for a thousand bucks makes for a great match with the Typhon. As it turns out, its strengths and weaknesses perfectly complement the Typhon's strengths and weaknesses, and the result is a very clean, balanced presentation that represents a great value for the money. And then next, if you have more money to spend, the best that I've heard the Typhons with is with the Accuphase E280 integrated amplifier. Oh my gosh, it is such a good match. A strong, confident, warm, full sound, very balanced and to me this represents the point of diminishing returns for the Typhon because even though it's not the most resolving speaker in the world you can still benefit by using higher quality electronics so I'd say up to six thousand dollars is where you will still hear benefits with the Typhon. Doesn't mean you have to spend that kind of money, but if you want to get the best out of them, then that's the price range that you will be at. Otherwise, guys, that is it. I listened to a lot of different amplifiers with this speaker, so if you're curious about how that went, just click on the description box below and I will have a summary for you. Otherwise, this is the end of the line, so as always, thanks for watching and until next time, peace.